Last night on our live show, we discussed the P. Diddy situation. I'm going to play a clip and I'm going to stop it every once in a while and give you my thoughts. I was reading the post earlier. 50 Cent said, said something I totally agree with. And when the feds come knocking on your door, they already got a case. Done deal. Feds come knocking at your door. It's a done deal, baby. Then the feds come knocking. It's pretty much a done deal. They have like a 98, 95%. Well, I don't know what their percentage. I know it's high. Very high. Very high percentage of conviction. So the feds come knocking. They start spending federal money. Start investigating. And Negro, you better start making getting your affairs in order. My uh, understanding, Antigua has no extradition the extradition agreement uh, with America. So that means he uh. can post them over. He can post them over there and watch this whole thing unfold. I may never come back. Sound like some Russell Simmons. Shit. I was just he took the words right out of my mouth. Has he even came back to America? He's still. Y'all know about Russell Simmons, right? If you don't know about the Russell Simmons situation, go down that rabbit hole. I don't think bro has came back to the country since those allegations. Overseas, right? I, th- I think he dipped in. He, he may dip in. He, he, he never got charged, to my knowledge. He's been accused, but he's never been charged. So before he before they hit him with the one two punch, he stepped off into the uh, in, in, into the island and started uh, chanting. They leave because they know they are wrong. And look, Russell Simmons is a legend in the music business. Diddy is a legend in the music business. But these guys know what they did, and that's why they left the country. Allegedly. And something else. Actually, I want to play this clip. This um, this interview with Howard Stern has since gone viral. It is an interview with Usher uh, from about, six, about seven years ago, seven, eight years ago, where Usher was talking about his experiences with Puff Daddy. Um, Uh-oh. When he was a teenager. So I'm Uh-oh. going to play this. It's about a minute, 10 seconds or something like that. Then I want to get your reaction on it. This is Usher on the Howard Stern Show from August 22nd, 2016. Shout out to Howard Stern. First of all, radio legend. One of the reasons I started doing this. But here's Usher on Howard Stern. I moved to New York City. And I lived with Sean Puffy Combs for a year. That's the crazy thing. Now, that yeah. was L.A. Reid's idea, right? We're sending New you York over to City. something called Puffy Flavor Camp. There you go. <laughs> he was 13 and he lived with Puffy for a year. We'll start there. Keep going, Usher. To learn Flavor some... Camp. Yeah, Flavor that's camp. what it was called. And you're going to go to Puff Daddy's. He's In pre- the night. Flavor Camp. That's pretty weird. 13. And where is his parents? Anyway, let's keep going. Usher on Howard Stern Show. Hey, do you understand what that's like? Puffy's place was like just filled with chicks and orging like nonstop, right? No, nah, not really. I Come mean, on. but did I, hey, it was curious. I got a chance to see some things. Yeah, but you were 13. What were you I saying? I went there to see the lifestyle. Right. And, and I saw it. And it, was, <laughs> and it was. What lifestyle? What lifestyle, Usher? Hmm. Let's keep going. <laughs> but I don't know if I could indulge and understand what I was even looking at. It was it was pretty wild. It was so pretty nobody crazy. tried to, you know, some woman didn't come along. I didn't and, say it. Okay. I, I didn't say it. <laughs> what I did say is that there were very curious things taking place. Uh-huh. So Usher was 13 and had a lot of women around him who I'm sure were taking advantage of him at that time. But let's keep it pushing. Usher on Howard Stern. Uh-huh. And I didn't necessarily understand. Uh-huh. Biggie Smalls was Biggie there. Biggie Smalls was there. Biggie was there. Lil' Kim. Lil' Kim. Craig Mack. All know, these people. All- Here comes the brand new flavor in your ear. Is that what that song was really about? Huh? Time for new flavor in your ear? Huh? So hanging around. Uh, yeah, man. Faith Evans. Jodeci, Mary J. Okay? Blosh. They ain't nothing about this shit. Oh. <laughs> See, that's that's strike one right there. How does his parents not know about this? How does his parent? How is he so far removed from his parents at that age that they don't know about what's going on? And that right there, ladies and gentlemen, that right there is the problem. The parents. It's not Diddy's fault. Diddy's a piece of trash, allegedly, if he did what he did. How the heck is this 13-year-old boy so far removed from his parents? If my son was in the music business there at 13, there's no way he would be that far removed from me. And that's why they try to keep you away from your parents. That's why they try to keep the parents away. You've seen, you've heard stories, you've seen movies about, you know, kids getting strayed from their parents. And, and dude, the parents are getting pushed out so they can do what they want to do, allegedly, with these young artists. 
I was having a good time. You know what I mean? Does he have you doing any chores? Are you doing dishes at all? I mean, to keep you humble somewhat, or are you just like, can you stay up till four in the morning with them and party? I mean, I could. I yeah. actually stayed up longer than them. And, and what kind of, do you have money? What's going on? I mean, I had like per diem. Yeah. Uh -huh. I, had, I had like you know what like a, a living. life. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Fourteen years old. You're a dad now. Would you ever send your kid to Puffy Camp? Hell no. <laughs> See? He said, hell to the no. I would never let my kid go to a puffy camp. And this is before all the allegations came out. This is seven years ago, people. 2016. So seven, eight years ago. Would you let your kid, as a father, Usher, go to a puffy camp? Hell no. Nah. Well, let's get my man, my dude, my homeboy, my mentor, my co-host, let's get Alonzo Williams' opinion on Usher, on Howard Stern, back in 2016. <laughs> he said, hell no. Talk to me, Alonzo, when you hear Usher talk about that seven years ago. You know, um, when you hear him talking about it, he definitely, I would, I'm willing to bet he has some, some interesting, interesting experiences with some yep. interesting people. He can't speak on it because somebody can go to jail. Yep. Okay. He was 13 years old. Somebody yep. can get a reverse case, Bill Cosby, whatever the case may be. Yep. Uh, at 13 years old, if he was a girl, there would be some cases. It would be some ch filed, some uh, charges filed right now. Y'all hear that? That's probably the deepest line of this whole thing. If you were a 13 year old girl going to these parties, we would be having a different story right now. But since it was a boy, these things got pushed under the rug let's keep it pushing somebody would be filing some charges come on of guy. course we could leave the guy eh, eh, he's gonna laugh this off it's no big deal he has none of experiences he got to sleep with some older women you know he learned some things he shouldn't have learned right away but hey he's a uh, shit what the hell you know that, that, i remember seeing uh a documentary on uh, uh what's her name drew, uh, drew barrymore she was like nine ten years old being in studio 54. yep you know about Drew Barrymore, famous actress, Charlie's Angels, E.T. She was in Hollywood back in the 80s and 90s. She was going to Studio 54 at age 9 and 10. No telling what she was seeing. Hanging out. 9, 10 years old. I mean, she was young. Right after Firestarter and shit, man. It, it, you know, it's amazing what people will, will let people, the kids do. You know, going back to that double standard you talked about earlier, Lonzo, how if Usher was a 13-year-old girl, it would be a different story you know that's that's in real life also not just in the in hollywood i mean i was 16 having sex with 19 20 21 year old women yeah i you mean know, i was just a player it was just what it, it was what it was but yeah but it, it would be different if i was a 16 year old girl you know what i'm saying like yeah. why, why do you and that's the truth i'm not bragging i'm not boasting i'm not you know lying <laughs> none of that when i was 15 16 I was getting hit on by 19, 20, 21 year olds. I was getting advanced upon. Look, I'm not, I'm 15, 16. I don't have enough balls to walk up to a 20 year old girl and be like, hey, let me get your number. I wasn't that player. For the most part, it was them coming on to me. So this happens. Now, if I was a 16 year old chick, it'd be a different story, huh? Yeah. I, yeah, why do you think there's a double standard in America? Like, boys aren't as, poor, as important as girls are when it comes to that. I don't think it's a matter of importance. I think, I think because the male, being a male, you are considered a sexual aggressor. And if you can aggressively talk upon, or talk upon a grown woman to uh, roll in the hay with you, then more power to you. Whereas women, they, they seem to be a little bit more, um, what's that, um, uh, demure. Submissive. Yeah, submissive. And they can be bullied. <laughs> People feel they can be bullied into doing things. So that's why I think women tend to get a um, to get a pass or get be, be people more responsive to a woman being sexually abused by an older man because you know you, you might feel bullied, intimidated, threatened. Whereas a, a sixteen year old man, a sixteen year old kid, if he rolls up on a sixteen year old uh, a woman that's a little older than him, shit, everybody happy. She can break his, she can teach, teach, teach him how to break her back, and he can have something to talk about for the rest of his life. Yep. And the funny part is, Lonzo, even going back, looking back, 
I wasn't even the the pursuer. It was the older woman that was coming yeah. at me. With- Facts. I was 15, 16 year old getting pursued by older women. It just was what it was. Oh, man, I have stories for you guys. I'm going to try to tell some stories sometime where it's not going to break any YouTube rules because these they, these get explicit and some of the terminology that, that are in these stories. I, I, I'll figure a way to tell you some of these stories in the future. Which is so interesting. Uh, you know, um, I've, I've, I've seen it recently, man. One of my, me and my buddies hang out a little ago and women was checking out his 16-year-old son. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, he ain't but 16, okay? He ain't ready for what you got. He ain't ready for the stretch marks yet. He ain't ready for that. That's he ain't you ready. Think. No, don't do it like that, okay? Oh, that's hilarious. It did give me a thing, though. I will tell you that I've always loved older women since then. And even the older my wife gets, I tell her she just gets more sexier to me. She's 46 right now. She's never been sexier to me. You know what I'm saying? Uh, She's sexier to me now. <laughs> I may. Hey, hey. Some things, get, some things do get better with time, man. You know? That, that is true the older my wife gets the more i want to bang the f out of her like we've we've been having a, a, a lot of um marital what do they call it because i'm i'm trying not to use the sex word i'll just spell it out because youtube hates that word but the older my wife gets the more i just want to bang her it's crazy like i don't know i don't get it i don't am i the only one comment down below the only one who likes older women Kind of like fine wine. I don't know. Mm, give me like a chicken or four, late forties, early fifties. I'm in heaven. Forget that little nineteen year old, twenty year old who doesn't have. Like, oh my god, can you Uber me to your house? Man, f-, f all that. Give me a fifty one year old grandma, stretch marks, who walks with a limp because she got shot back in the like. Give me something like that's what I need. Well, before we close it out, Puff Daddy's attorney team just released a statement i'd say within the past hour and a half just before we started the show but i'm gonna read it read it off to you um and uh let's see what uh what we come up with at the end but uh here's their puffy's attorney team yesterday there was a gross overuse of military level force as search warrants were executed at mr combs's residence there is no excuse for the excessive show of force and hostility exhibited by authorities or the way his children and employees were treated Mr. Combs was never detained, but spoke to and cooperated. I read good, don't I? That boy can read, Caddy. Damn, listen to me over there. Listen to me. Operated with authority. Some of you motherfuckers can't read for shit, and it shows in your text messages and your comment section. Like, 90% of the people comment in my comment section. Y'all need to go back to school or something, but let's keep it going. This is Puff Daddy's attorney telling us, you know, that what happened was excessive and all that. Despite media speculation, neither Mr. Combs nor any of his family members have been arrested, nor has their ability to travel been restricted in any way. The unprecedented ambush paired with an advanced, coordinated media presence leads to a premature rush to judgment of Mr. Combs and is nothing more than a witch hunt based on meritless accusations made in civil lawsuits. Last sentence there has been no finding of criminal or civil liability with any of these allegations. Mr. Combs is innocent and will continue to fight every single day to clear his name. Has his name already been tarnished bad enough, Lonzo? Do you think he'll ever come back from this? It's, re- it's really hard to come back from these type of accusations. Really hard. Even if you are innocent, even if you were, let's not say innocent, even if you were never charged, it is still very hard to come back from these accusations. Look at Michael Jackson. Michael was never charged. And to this day, I, I think Michael was doing stuff with kids. And so do most of you listening. No matter how much you try to protect them and no matter how, no matter how much you love playing man in the mirror. you know, Dude, most of us, unfortunately, up until Michael's passing, we suspected that Michael was doing some stuff that he shouldn't have been doing. Let's just keep it real. Really hard to come back from something like this. Let me see here. He had to step off from revolt. He had to step off from um, his uh, his vodka. He um, ain't nobody really messing with him. He losing all of the invitations to the parties. Ain't nobody want to go to his parties. He ain't getting invited to no more. <laughs> ain't nobody going to the parties. Puffy, I can't mess with you, bro. He can't give a birthday party. He can't go. He can't <laughs> give a birthday party in Chuck E. Cheese. Okay. 
So yeah, that's about it. If you want to check out the full interview, subscribe to NWA Stories with Lonzo Williams on YouTube. We do it every single Tuesday at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on NWA Stories with Lonzo Williams. And please do join that channel if you enjoy old school West Coast hip hop. Specifically, Alonzo Williams is a pioneer and we dive deep into the story of the true story of West Coast hip hip hop and we also touch on a lot of topics as well so definitely check them out also please 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 download the rumble app r-u-m-b-l-e i'm gonna keep asking you guys over and over to do this every show so if you can get tired of it if you want go ahead download the rumble app and please subscribe to dusty vision radio on the rumble app the rumble app is an uncensored version of youtube basically that's the easiest way to put it like youtube be tripping some time with their censorship guidelines and all that you want the uncensored version go over to rumble and subscribe to dusty vision radio also subscribe to my second channel dusty vision radio right here on youtube just in case anything funky goes down with this one Go subscribe to my other channel, Dusty Vision Radio. I post something there every single day. So please do check out my second channel, Dusty Vision Radio. I'm at 2,500 subscribers right now. Let's try to get that bad boy to 3,000. Let's keep it pushing, keep it pushing. I appreciate each and every one of you. Also, I'm on Facebook at Dusty Vision TV. I have a group with over 10,000 people in it, and I post stuff in there. Gets a little controversial. You know, Facebook kicks me off every once in a while, but whatever. Go to Dusty Vision TV on Facebook facebook and if you're on instagram i know this is a lot of information guys but if you're a true supporter instagram instagram dusty vision radio and if you want to send me a super thanks send your boy a few dollars there's a little dollar sign right in front of you on your screen that says super thanks or super chat if you're listening live throw your boy a few dollars i'd really appreciate it We'll continue to follow this Puff Daddy situation, this P. Diddy situation on my channel. So please do stay tuned. One more time, hit that like button. And if this is your first time joining the channel and you like what you hear, please hit that subscribe button. I'll talk to you guys soon. Peace.